Okay. Okay, thank you very much for the attendance. Uh, this work is, uh, is part of the it's part of the PhD work of my student. And uh, it goes on the, let's say, one step forward on the works that we have been working previously on deformed exponential families for probability distributions. And uh, at this moment, we were, let us say, concerned about some parts of our definition, our model, and how some functions inside it, uh, inside that definition, work it for some parts of the space. Let's uh, go through some of the details along during the presentation. So uh, again, so the idea was, OK, we have uh, some definition of probability distribution functions. And we are going to consider the p mu as the space of all those functions. and. Uh, we could actually, we do some kind of uh, equipment. Equ we equip the manifold structure using some different or specific exponentials. Uh, let us call those deformed exponentials. So we are doing, trying to find some mapping on, from the space onto the PME in order to have uh, information about those. L0 are not positive. Uh, not necessary. Uh, that's the Musilek or Lixi space that I'm going to mention. Okay. So uh, just some background on those. So some works date from Piston Sen and Pistonia in 2007, and they started from the classical exponential. And then our proposition was in 2013. And the idea, actually, began with my colleague, uh, it was to replace the exponential, actually to the deformed exponential, by a general function phi, uh, which must satisfy some uh, properties. So it should be convex, as I said, and it should be, uh, let's say, asymptotically zero when the argument goes to minus infinity and goes to infinity when the argument goes to infinity as well. However, uh, those conditions are not enough to, let's say, fully represent the probability distribution functions, because some of the properties may be lost in the process, and we need some, um, other, some uh, an additional con condition. So the additional condition states that uh, uh, the integral of uh, the function applied to some parameters here should be limited, should be bounded, OK? And uh, the point is, this kind of uh, model or this kind of function is required in order to put the distribution function on the same musilek or Lixi space. Otherwise, you can be outside of it. And the properties of probability, the integral uh, equals to 1, and so on and so forth, is not going to be fulfilled. So uh, that's basically what is being said in bullets 1 and 2. And one important point is that now our function, our probability model, is going to, that we had called it uh, phi family. So it's going to be written like this. And we are going to see that psi function. That's what we call the normalizing function. And we are going to work on, uh, let's say, this work. It's the investigation of some properties for some cases of this function. OK? So just a summary of uh, recalling some of the properties. The phi family is the mapping of the Musilek or Lixi space on this f of phi space, which is uh, based on the, an important part, is on the boundary of that subset here. OK? OK, so uh, once that we have established the, the initial points, so what is the goal of our work, That's the present one? So we would like to study uh, the behavior of that normalizing function, the psi one, near the boundary of the domain. Because near the boundary, something interesting happens. You can be inside for a combination, but outside of it for another. So we would like to understand a little bit better about it. And uh, another contribution is to study what occurs near 
the boundary, but for the purely atomic case. Okay? So for that, as I said, it's, uh, we started from what we have been doing previously. And uh, in the first GSI conference, uh, one of our contribution was to evaluate that kind of uh, behavior of that family, the phi family, for the delta two condition. So the delta two condition is uh, related to the, the decreasing or increasing property of the function, if it increases rapidly or not. So it's related to that. So the condition, the technical one, is saying that a musilek orlix function, uh, the psi one here, the phi one here, uh, satisfies the delta two condition if we have k and f such that we have uh, this property fulfilled. Okay? So the geometrical consequence of that is that if a function does not satisfy such delta two condition, then we have the boundary. The boundary is now represented by this partial of b. Okay? It's not empty anymore. So we have elements on it that we need to take care, okay? So we started evaluating uh, this kind of, the behavior of such function, the normalizing one. In the cases that uh, the, the, fun the condition star, which is that additional condition that we increase it, in, in, uh, inserted, sorry, uh, in order to fit the parametric model into the muslek or Lix space. And also for the case where the Delta two condition is not fulfilled. So, so let's uh, start uh, about the discussion of the occurrence of that condition, which means that uh, that integral of the function is bounded. Okay. So what we have shown is that uh, if the integral is bounded and the normalizing function converges to a value, sorry. If the, the, f the integral is bounded, the normalizing function converges. So that's a, we can, we prove it that. It's uh, not easy to, to, to show, but uh, it can be seen on that. But on the other hand, we also investigated the case, okay, but uh, what if the integral is not bounded? So we have different families that are not inside the same space. So we have seen that uh, the normalizing function does not converge, which breaks our model in some sense because we are not going to have, let's say, a very behaved one. So our initial questions, research questions were, what if the, condition, the star condition is not, uh, does not fulfill or is not occurring? And in such case, can we study the behavior of the, the normalizing function in order to say something about this kind of parametric model? So, uh, that was the first one. So we started this, those problems or tried to solve uh, this kind of uh, such questions uh, in the GSI 2017. And we started uh, when the problem saying, okay, we can say that uh, if we have the condition star, meaning that uh, that kind of uh, integral is not bounded, it's not bounded and we can find some functions u such that uh, the lambda is convergence. We can find elements inside of that uh, of the boundary part. Okay. So in that case, we can pro it's pro we prove it that uh, even in the case the condition is not fulfilled, it's not bounded anymore the integral. So we may find it's possible to find elements on the boundary of that function, okay? So we are still going to see that normalizing function still converges for a given point, which preserves the structure of our five family there, okay? So the question now is, okay, but what if the function is still uh, unbounded, but not for the purely atomic case, oh, I mean, not for the non-atomic case, but for the purely atomic case, okay? It means that uh, we are going to see for a specific time frame, not for all elements of the time. So if the function does not satisfy the bounding of the integral, we, are, we 
the consequences are uh, that the delta two condition is not fulfilled, and therefore the, we have elements on the boundary part. So there, are, there is no empty set on that. So if we suppose that the function is not satisfying that, we are going to see that there exists the elements on that, and we may say that uh, still we are going to check, uh, these are just the steps of the results, that we are going to see that although the elements, uh, the function applying on those elements are not bounded, we can check that uh, the normalized function converges for that. So that's uh, what we believe it's somehow important, is that regardless of the occurrence or not about that condition of the bounding of the integral, so we are going to still see that if we are talking about the, boundary, the elements on the boundary set, we always, or at least we are going to see conditions where the normalizing function converges. Okay? So we did that, let's say, for the non-atomic case and for the poorly atomic case. So the poorly atomic case is just a recall on that. So the counting measure is on the set of the natural elements. It's not the real ones any anymore. So for those as me are engineers, so we are considering previously as the continuous time and now it's the discrete time. Okay? So the condition delta 2 is represented by the notation small delta 2. It's just a differentiation about what kind of space we are considering. And the functions are not integrals anymore. They are sums and sequences of functions. Okay? So in that case, for the purely atomic case, uh, the star condition, it's equivalent to that double star one, which is that uh, a sum of those functions is still bounded, not the integral anymore, of course. Okay? So as the result, it's one of the results, we can see that, okay, if condition two stars, double star holds, if and only if we have a sequence of C's that make the function to be considered a PDF or a probability distribution function. And we can find constants that are still going to preserve the structure of the cap small delta two condition. Okay? So and if the section and this the, the sequence psi phi, sorry, uh, does not belong to that or it is not filling the condition, only in an if and only if we may find con uh, constants epsilon and alphas, don't negative that uh, we are going to see a condition different on that. So we may have the same behavior or the non-atomic case for the purely atomic case. Okay? And here uh, is just, a, let's say, the formalization of that in terms of the the i of theta is exactly that function, the integral of the, the function. Okay, five minutes, okay. And then we can find, for example, we are going to check that we are going to see sequences of functions that are going to say, okay, we are, may have uh, for se some uh, limited lambda parameters, which are going to be present in here. Uh, we have bounded sequences or unbounded one for different lambdas, and also for the, uh, the non-atomic case. So we are going to see the very similar ones that we need to, to actually, we are applying for U star, the superscript and up in subscript here, which are just comparisons on inside and outside the, the, bound, the, the sets. Okay, so yeah, uh, so what we are, thinking on this type of line uh, of work. So we still want to find some relationships because although we have found some results that match the different models on the purely atomic case and non-atomic case, and, but we are not seeing yet some relations between the, the condition two uh, double stars, which is the sum of the integral of the sum of the functions being bounded, and the delta two, uh, instead of what we have obtained for the non-atomic case, and the behavior of the normalizing conditions in some of those 
property. So you would like to have, let's say, a full set of results combining the different sets and different uh, conditions instead of, as we have uh, for the non-atomic case. So the investigation of the behavior on the normalized function is also uh, of our interesting to make it, but uh, not for the cases that we are presenting. It's, I'm going to go back here just to show a picture. It's like that, because here uh, is injective, right? So we have e every element here. We'd like to see if we could find a different function. Let's say it's zero up to a given value here, and then start increasing. So that could be very interesting for some applications where we know that there is no data at all from some values. But this is going to change a lot our parametric model that we have discussed so far. Okay. In any case, we believe that uh, though the study of such relationships is strongly based on the use of this kind of functions uh, and the investigation of the boundaries and the convergence of the series in that sense. So as the conclusions, uh, so it's just that we have proved that the condition star does not hold, then we still have the case that the boundary of the set is not empty, and that brings the possibility of finding elements inside that boundary that's still going to fill the conditions. And we conclude that regardless the condition, the occurrence of the condition, uh, we still have uh, a possibility that the normalized function converges to the boundary, saying that we still may use the same model for such kind of problems. And for the, non -pur the purely atomic case, we find an equivalent condition, uh, which is, let's say, the representation instead of the discrete case for this kind of, uh, of integral here. OK, so thank you. So thank you very much, and the paper is open for discussion, and I actually have the first question Okay, for you. please. <laughs> so uh, the normalization function you do here in this approach is essentially a subtractive normalization, right? Yes. So uh, have you considered the divisive, the divisive normalization? And because in the case of the Orish space, the there is an equivalence between the Orish norm and the Luxembourg norm. So, so there is an equivalence between these two ways of essentially defining mm. the normal model function. So I wonder whether you have anything like that uh, when you N no, we have explore that. Thing. Yes, it's a very interesting point, but we haven't considered yet. Mm -hmm. Because, uh, the, let's say, the rationale in the very beginning was to map from the exponential family, which has yeah, that yeah, yeah, negative. Yeah, so we started from the same kind of model and tried to generalize that one. But that's a very good suggestion. Well, so. well, exponential model, these are the same. Yes, so that's, that's the, the point. So yeah, we started, that's the point. We started from the exponential model. So, But that's a very kind of nice suggestion to, to well, use the Young function, the two norms. Yes. You know, it, it, we may have some, let's say, very interesting properties using this kind of, uh, of model. Okay, okay any, any other questions? Uh, have you a nice uh, function of phi? Uh, uh, so, so I understand phi is a generalization of exponential. Yes, so it's you a, have a... You have a familiar one. That yes, for example, I mean, all those deformed exponential functions can be fit in that model. For example, the Kanyadax one, the Q exponential, it's a kind of phi, fa phi, exponi phi uh, function. So these are, it's just a way of, uh, let's say, saying the same thing that others had said, but with different conditions. So we have, let's say, a very wide range of functions that, uh, because they do not need to be, ver to be very specific. They only need to be convex and convergent towards minus infinity. So Kanyadax is one example, Q exponential is one, another one. Uh, there are some functions. Uh, the tricky part is to find the good functions that had those uh, that have th those properties but do not converge for some specific points. <laughs> <laughs>
or do not have bounded aspects. So we have uh, just a few of those. If you, uh, if you stick to, to phi, which are convex, a good example is a Laplace transform of uh, ordinary Laplace transform of a measure. Mm. So That's true, yes. Yeah. That's true, yes. Uh, so uh, the link with uh, generating measure yes. can be interesting. Yes. Thank you. It's a good suggestion as well. Okay, so let's thank the speaker again. <laughs>